I'm Jordan. It's great to worship here today. If this is your first time with us, welcome. We would love to get to know you, so please click on the I'm New button or click on the Connect With Us button on fbcwimberly.com. Also, feel free to reach out by email to scott at fbcwimberly.com. You'll find information about all of our events and resources on our website, including great materials for kids, students, and families on the Family Life tab. And you can stay in touch with what's happening on and around our local campus by clicking on the Events tab, all at fbcwimberly.com. Com. Pastor Scott is leading us through our series, The Attitudes of Jesus. Plug into group materials that supplement the sermon each week by clicking on the Resources tab of our website, then to Life Group Materials. You can also listen daily for scripture readings for your God time. You've heard Pastor Scott say the church is the hope of the world, and that's a big statement. What does it mean, and what are we doing to see that statement become a reality? Join us Wednesday night, March 31st at 6.30 on our Wimberley campus or online for a night of information and prayer for local and global missions. This is our opportunity to hear all that God is doing through us and our opportunity to seek God's face as we move forward. All for Jesus. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Melinda. Let's tell everyone what is happening Easter weekend. You go right ahead. Okay. So we are excited about all the opportunities that we have um, here on our local campus on Easter, April 2nd through the 4th. So Friday, at five, from 5 to 8 p.m., we're going to have our journey to the cross. This drive through experience will step into the life of Jesus on that Good Friday, and we'll see what happens as that day unfolds. And then on Saturday, we invite families with kids to have a blast at our egg safari from 2 to 4 p.m. This is a time for families to stay in their cars and look for eggs throughout our campus um, as they go on a safari. And then at the end, they'll get a bag of eggs to take home to continue the celebration. Then Easter Sunday morning, we'll have two outdoor gatherings at 9.30 and 11 as we celebrate our risen King. That sounds like a great weekend, and we hope you'll join us in just one one more thing, you can give to our work of ministry both locally and globally by clicking on the blue button on the top right corner of our homepage or text ETERNITY to 73256. Giving helps support our missional work for 2021, No Need in the Valley, as we strive to make sure that no need goes unmet. If you need help discovering how God has shaped you to serve or to find a serve opportunity near you, reach out to scott at fbcwimberly.com. Now let's worship together. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing. Yes, I am. 
There's something missing, and I just don't know what it is or how to fix it. Have you ever wondered, am I doing all these religious things, but I still feel far away from God? Or have you ever complained, contemplated, I want to be right with God, but I really just don't know how? Uh, uh, the above comments are really questions of the soul or, or statements of the soul. They're probably more common than you think. Because most of us want to put on an external, like so, being externally solid when we're really internally gooey. It's like looking at Tara's banana bread in the oven. It looks done and it ought to be done, but you cook it and it's gooey in the middle and you have to cook it some more. A lot of us are that way. On the outside, we look okay, but on the inside, we're a gooey mess and we need more work in our heart. Now, most of us have learned to play the church game to keep up that appearance and, and a piety only to have that deep longing inside of us. Now, when we look at the attitudes of Jesus here found in the Beatitudes, we, we find these nuggets of truth that are placed there right in the middle that really drives all the others. Now, this is a really important talk this week because this is really the jewelly nugget in the middle of all of the Beatitudes. The first five Beatitudes poor in spirit, mourning over sin, humility, desperate for righteousness, and displaying mercy, which we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. They're all leading to this one, and that's the purity of heart. It's really called a chiastic structure. When, when theological thought goes from this thought to the heart of the thought, 
back to the thought again. So it's that kind of parallelism that drives this truth deeper. They're leading this. It's this classic process. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now think about this. I realize my spiritual poverty. I'm mourning over my brokenness. I'm desiring to be meek. I'm embracing humility, and I'm extending mercy. I'm doing all these things. But this is where I really want to be. Jesus, the master communicator, builds us to the point where we sigh and we admit we need something to happen in our hearts before they can happen in our lives. You know, life is hard. And it's hard to have a positive life when you have a negative heart. It's hard to live in the bliss of God when, when you're filled with the blisters of life. Now, Jesus knows that the heart's the center of our attitude. As a man thinks, so he is. As we think in our hearts, so we are. We need a pure heart. God created me a heart, create a clean heart for me, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. It says in Psalm 51.10. Sincerity now is not a pathway. We could be sincerely wrong. You could sincerely desire something and be sincerely wrong. A pure heart is not found in morality or in your self-effort. Thomas Watson said this, Morality can drown a man as sure as vice. And so many times we think God wants us to be good. He wants us to be His. And when we're His, we do good. We are not good. We do good. Purity of heart comes from the sacred heart of King Jesus. Change my attitude, change my character, change my behavior, change my life. Desiring a pure heart. Let's look at this and find the pathway to bliss that comes from Jesus, the pure heart. Father, thank you for what you're going to say today. And I pray, Father, that you speak through me yet once again. And I thank you for the truth upon truth that you're building to build these lives, these folks' lives, that they may honor you. And I pray this all in your son's strong name. Amen. Now I'm going to repeat myself yet again. You need a group. Form a life group. Form a watch party. Get people in your home. The virus is descending. The, the vaccine is on the rise. It starts safe to gather again. And we can't judge our effectiveness about what we show up to. Uh, you can show up to in-person gatherings all you want to and still miss Jesus, or watch online all you want to and still miss Jesus. But I want you to find a group of people that you can live life with it. And let us help, help you find those people you can live life with, called a life group. And just uh, send us an email. Let us help you make that connection. We'll give you training. We'll give you content. Everything we're doing in this series is built upon, built upon. So we want you to experience the weekend gatherings and experience the group time as well. So let's jump in. Oh, yeah, by the way, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving. Thank you for making the, this ministry go forward and do the great things that God wants it to do. Now, here's the first thought. A bad heart will lead to a bad life. Now, some of you physically, you got bad hearts. And, you know, I, my cardiologist says, you know, I have coronary artery disease. Okay, so I take medicine for that so that my bad heart doesn't kill my life. But you can't live with a bad heart and you can't live spiritually with a bad heart. And the people around you need you to have a good heart. How do you have that purity of heart? Proverbs 4, 23 says, guard your heart above all else for it's the source of life. Okay. Jesus said this, from the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adultery, sexual immorality, thefts, false testimonies and slanders. Okay, so a bad heart produces a bad life. Psalm 26, 2 says this, Test me, O Lord, try me, and examine my heart and my mind. And that's that whole shifting of the thought of my life, process of my life, produces the character, produces the behavior. The heart is the, literally the center of our attitudes. It's the center of our lives. Now, there's a big difference between having a bad heart and having a bad day or making bad decisions. Peter had a bad day when he denied Jesus. And Judas had a bad heart when he betrayed Jesus. He had a prolonged bad heart. Peter just had a bad day. All of us are going to make decisions that we regret. We're going to do things to regret. In fact, I've said to people, 
I know I've done this, but this is not my heart. And, and for people that have been wounded by my bad decisions, they think I have a bad heart. But what God wants me to give me is the purity of my heart. And then he gives me the grace to cover up the stupidity of my bad day. And he can go and fix my relationships when I pursue humility and brokenness. So what are the attitudes of a bad heart? Well, this list is probably going to make some of you mad. Entitlement is an, an attitude of a bad heart. I deserve more because I'm entitled. Like, we have a new intern joined our, our staff recently, and they told her not to park in Pastor Scott's parking place up at the office. Now, we have no signs there, but everybody knows where I park. And they know if you park in my spot, I'm going to lose my mind. Why? Because I'm entitled. I'm entitled. Now, even as I say this, I don't want to be that way, but I struggle. And I, with being transparent to our team, I tell them that. And now it's turned into a joke where they mock me, but I deserve the mocking because I got the problem of a bad, entitled heart. Hmm. Then there's arrogance. Arrogance says not only I deserve more, arrogance says I'm better than. I'm superior to you. I'm arrogant. Arrogance displays itself in so many forms. It displays itself in racism and judgmentalism, elitism and pride. Not only am I better than you, but the people I'm around are better than you. We are elitist and we're prideful about it. And then there's divisiveness. Someone who's openly divisive has a bad heart. It says this in Titus, warn a divisive person once, warn them the second time. After that, have nothing to do with them for they're self-condemned and warped. What? And I want to tell you all this. I've pastored a lot of churches, been doing this for 40 years. And every church I've dealt with divisive people have had a bad heart, bad heart heart. If divisive people do not need to be in leadership, they don't. They do not need to be listened to, and they sure do not need to be followed. And if someone's divisive, you need to stay the heck away from them. And if you're divisive, you need to repent, because you're wrong. It's a bad heart. Selfishness. I want what I want when I want it, which displays itself in preference. In preference. I've heard people say this to me recently. Pastor Scott, you're not very good on video. Really? Really? You're so much better live and in person. Well, I think I'm wonderful everywhere. You see, and it wounds my selfish pride. But basically what they're saying is they prefer this over that. Therefore, what they prefer matters, and that's selfish. That's selfish. Huh. And then... I could go on with this list, but we'll end it with number six, judgment. I'm judgmental. I'm going to make a judgment on you without e even knowing you. I'm going to judge by the way you dress. I'm going to judge by the way you talk. It's really interesting. Because I have a southern accent, people of other places in the United States think I'm ignorant because I have a southern accent. That's interesting, isn't it? Judging me based on my accent. Now, when we lived in Canada, Tara, my sweet wife, has a very distinct southern accent. They just wanted to hear her talk because they loved it. It's just say anything. It would drive her crazy. But we can't judge people. We're not supposed to judge people. That's God's job. In fact, Jesus said, I didn't come into the world to judge the world, for the world was judged already. I've come into the world to save the world. Oh, we're supposed to be like Jesus. Huh. There are seasons or situations where all of us are guilty of some of these attitudes. We are. But if these attitudes are unchecked, they become your normal, then you got a bad heart. If they become your norm, you have a bad heart. And the sad truth is without Jesus, we all got bad hearts. All of us. You see, the bliss of God comes with a transplanted heart. What? That's crazy. No, no, it's not. Listen to what it says in Ezekiel. And I will give them integrity of the heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove their heart of stone from their bodies and give them a heart of flesh so they will follow my statues and keep my ordinances and practice them. They will be my people. I will be their God because of a transplanted heart from stone to flesh. 
One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness. One confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. Romans 10.10. 10. See, a transplanted heart of purity produces these things in our lives. A created purity, the purity that was before the fall of man. You see, before sin came, we all had pure hearts. God put purity in the heart of man, but sin broke the purity. The transplanted heart of God then became a positional imputed purity of being God's child. God moved into our life based on Jesus and his purity, and he gave, us to, gave it to us through the heart transplant of his purity for those who've trusted in him. Then it becomes a practical purity. So we have a created purity from, from the fall, from creation. We're created with a pure heart that fell in sin. Then we have a positional imputed purity that Christ gives us the moment of salvation. But then we have a practical purity of a transplanted heart that we might live in the holiness of God. And then we have a heavenly purity that comes when we go to heaven to be with the Lord. Now let me give it to you again. Created purity. God's created originally for us to have a pure heart. We sinned, and so he gave us positional purity through salvation. Then he gave us practical purity so we can live all for Jesus. Then he gives us heavenly purity when we get to, get to heaven and that we live with God forever in a transplanted heart. Uh, and you can't do this, but Jesus can. He's the great heart surgeon. It says in Proverbs 20, uh, 29, who could say, I've kept my heart pure, I'm cleansed from my sins? No one can say that. But God can say this, he made him who did not know sin to be sin for us, that in him we might become the righteous, the righteousness of God. Hmm. Jesus comes into our heart with his purity. We join with him in maintaining a healthy heart through Jesus' power of humility and holiness. How do we do that? Here's some things. How to maintain heart healthy habits, pure heart healthy habits. Fellowship with other believers who hold my heart, who love me, who hold me accountable, who I walk life with, him, with, with together all for Jesus. Spiritual disciplines of prayer and scripture, it, it molds my heart. I was uh, on a plane recently and sitting by a guy and he asked for a pen and and uh, I gave it to him, and he, he said he journals. And I said, well, I do too. And we got into a conversation. Well, his journal was journaling positive thoughts. My journaling is journaling prayers to Jesus. And I explained to him what I did. And, and after we had a, a fairly long conversation, he, he stopped and he looked at me and said, I've never even thought about a pastor in the way that you are. I thought, well, that's kind of weird, but maybe that's good. I said, dude, I'm just a man just like you are. And I just realized I need, a, I need a pure heart that only God gives me. He goes, huh. And we exchanged emails and probably will be in contact in the days ahead. That's interesting. The scripture holds my heart, changes my mind, changes my character, changes my behavior. Then my heart, a, hum, a humble heart that wants to serve people. That's a heart, healthy habits. And then a sharing heart that from the contagious of a pure heart that changes the world. Wait a second, Scott. I hear something in there that sounds like a discipleship process of connecting, growing, serving, and sharing. <gasps> really? Heart healthy habits are connected heart to God through Jesus Christ and others, growing to be like Jesus through spiritual, spiritual disciplines and prayer and, and growing and meditating his word, serving by serving God, by serving others, sharing contagiously the love of God. So really, the the four life commitments of a building lives church are heart healthy habits that come out of a pure heart of salvation. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <clears throat> pure heart, pure life. I'm going to see God. Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. This phrase, they will see God is not just about the future. But literally in the Greek, it means I will continually see God. I will continually see him, both now and forever. Moses was a man who had a friendship with God like no other. And his 
biggest desire was to see God. And, and God hid him in the cleft of the rock and passed by, and Moses looked at the backside of God as he went by. Moses only saw him as he passed. Jesus came that we might behold his glory. The one who we could not see became the one who is seen. No one has seen God the Father, but God the Son, Jesus Christ, has revealed him to, to, to us. God has come face to face through the person of Jesus Christ in order to do one thing for you, to give you a pure heart that you might find the bliss of God. I want to be like Jesus. I, I, well, I want to be like Jesus, but I want to have the experience of Moses. I want to see God. But I have. I've seen Jesus, and he's changed everything. You see, the purity of heart brings the clarity of my vision, and when my eyes see Jesus, everything changes. For what the heart seeks, the eyes see. Created me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. I want to see Jesus. I want a pure heart. And then I will find his bliss. And as a seven-year-old little boy, my heart was transplanted from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh when I whispered, Jesus, I'm yours. Has that happened to you? Have you made that decision to give your life to Christ? Why not? Why not today? Why not now? Why not do it and live in the bliss of God. Maybe your heart has been tainted by the barriers and unhealthy heart habits, entitlement, elitism, judgmentalism, pride, arrogance, racism, selfishness, on and on the list goes. Isn't it time to repent and come back to Jesus and live all for him? Because as a man thinks in his heart, so it is, creating me that clean heart, O oh God. Father, thank you for what you've said to us this morning. And I pray that we will come to you in repentance and faith. Those who need to come to you right now will do just that. By faith, give their life to you. Give their hearts to you. That you might give them back a pure heart. Folks, if that's you, just whisper that prayer. Jesus, I'm yours. And he will give you that new heart you've been looking for. You've been longing for. For those of us who've had that heart transplant, maybe it's grown weak and ineffective because of neglect or the circumstances of life or the sinful decisions we've made, God, I pray that you will give us a heart massage, that the purity of our heart may be beat strong for you, King Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing in us. Let us be people that have heart-healthy habits of connecting, growing, and serving and sharing as we live all for you. We thank you for what you're doing, and we pray this in your name. Amen. Hey, if you have a prayer request, you have a need, just let us know. Go into the prayer room. We'd love to pray with you. If you're struggling about all these things, we'd love to engage with you. Why? Because we're here for you. We love you. We are people of the pure heart to pure-heartedly love you. I hope this has helped. And don't forget the group material that's coming right behind this that continues to build upon the attitudes of Jesus. I hope this helps. God bless you. So we sing this we praise and I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the Hallelujah, my weapon is a melody, and I raise a hallelujah, and heaven comes to fight for me. I raise
Hello, I'm Scott Tidwell. I'm the online campus pastor here at FBCW. The online family is very important to us, and we want you to know whether you're here in the Wimberley Valley watching with us, or whether you're somewhere else in the United States or somewhere in Canada or Latin America, you are a part of our family. This year, we have an incentive in our valley called No Need in the Valley. We want to solve the needs that people have. God has shaped you to serve in a specific way. And whether you're here in the valley with us or whether you live a long way away, we can help you find how God has shaped you to serve. So reach out to me. I would love to help you on this journey, and we can find a place for you to serve in your local community. God wants you to serve, and we want to solve the needs of the people. The church is the hope of the world. Let's go out and do God's work this year.